Hi, this is Crystal and welcome to Dreaming of Heaven. Today's video is one that will get you really thinking. I've titled this video, Are You a Sheep? I Hope You Are. Now, in today's society, I hear you thinking to yourselves and saying, but why would I want to be a sheep? They all followed this narrative and look what's happened. They were deceived into taking Satan's mark. Yes, well, while this is somewhat true, remember that Satan relies on people not knowing God's word and seeking the Holy Spirit for understanding. So we also need to be careful that we're not following a narrative as well. We cannot be going to the right or the left. We are told to be staying on the narrow path. Satan owns both sides of the coin, the left, the right, the blue, the red, whatever it is that you'd like to call it. He will literally do anything to make God's true children blaspheme the word of God. So let's take a look at this sheep business that I'm talking about. Satan has brainwashed the people to use the word sheep as a derogatory term. Let's take a look at these memes, which so-called Christians share without even a single thought. So what does the world say a sheep is? They say that anyone who follows the media or government narrative is a sheep. The first meme shows that people turn into warriors when their football team loses, but turn into sheep when the government destroys their businesses, family and health. So those who are on the awake side of the fence that knows what's going on in the world today are using these words of sheep, calling people a sheep as a bad thing. So the second meme is much the same. Sheeple, following the crowd, dressing and listening to music society tells them to, as well as following trends from the internet without thinking for themselves. Right below that as well, we have a photo of a bunch of sheep with masks on, saying that it's a sign of the sheeple. Next, the sheep are looking for Joe Biden to follow him. And then we have a dog in the pack of sheep, as if a dog is good and the sheep are the brainwashed ones. Well, interestingly, the Bible says that the dogs don't make it into heaven, but the sheep do. Are you starting to see how Satan perverts everything in God's word? Then finally, there is the profile pic mocking the sheep saying, I'm boosted with a mask on. The world has really turned being a submissive, obedient sheep into a bad thing. Now, just because we are on the awake side doesn't mean that we won't be deceived or fall for Satan's tricks. He owns both sides, remember. In fact, his tricks will be even harder for us to see on this side because we are so aware of many other things. So he has to be even more subtle and more deceptive. Now let's look at what the Bible says about being a sheep. A sheep is a follower of Christ. It is not a bad thing. Psalm 95 seven says, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand today, if you will hear his voice. Jeremiah 56, my people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of his sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. First Peter 2, 25. For ye were a sheep going astray, but now are returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. Using sheep in a derogatory way is like using the Lord's name as a cuss word. It is giving sheep a negative connotation when being a submissive servant to Jesus, like a sheep to her shepherd. It is a beautiful thing that has been perverted and twisted to be a bad thing. And like I said before, Christians are sharing these memes and not even thinking about them before they share them. 
Remember, in the end, what's considered good is evil and what's evil is good. So this is just one of those things. Now, let's read John 10, because this is a chapter that I was woken up with very loudly at 3 a.m. one morning. John 10. So we'll read verses 1 through to 16 and 27. Truly, truly, I tell you, whoever does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. But the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen for his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has bought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will flee from him because they do not recognize his voice. Jesus spoke to them using this illustration, but they did not understand what he was telling them. So he said to them again, truly, truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in all of its fullness. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and the sheep are not his own. When he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. The wolf pounces on them and scatters the flock. The man runs away because he is a hired servant and is unconcerned for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them in as well and they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock and one shepherd. So this here was talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So isn't this just beautiful? Jesus is our good shepherd and we are the sheep that hear his voice. And sometimes literally, <laughs> like as in John 10. And then other times, you know, we hear him through the Holy Spirit that either convicts us or re reassures us. You know, it is just so important for us to listen to his voice. So now that we have seen how Satan has perverted people's minds to use sheep in a derogatory way and, is, and in a blasphemous way, Let's see how he has perverted people's minds to use goats in a glorified way, of course. What is a goat? What does the world say? Hashtag greatest of all time, aka a goat. So let's take a look at some of the pictures I have here on the screen. So you can see up the top there, a goat is someone who is the greatest of all time. Now, the four smaller pictures that I have over on the left are all pictures of famous people. So, you know, you will have, for example, LeBron James is called the greatest of all time when it comes to basketball. Um, it is used to glorify uh, stars, <laughs> of course, stars. Now, where I have the three longer pictures, the first one there in the middle, they call me goat, greatest of all times. The next one across, you know what a goat means? Greatest of all times. I consider myself one of those. And then, of course, we have the goat himself, the Baphomet. So not only have goats been used by Satan as a form of idolatry with this greatest of all time thing, they've also been used as a form of pride. And let's be really honest, we live in a world where boasting is the new normal and pride is praised as inspiring. Now, just remember what Matthew 6, 2 says, when you give to the needy, don't sound the trumpet before you like the hypocrites do. Why? 
because they have received their reward of praise, so no reward will be given to them by the Father. This applies to all the praise that the prideful people seek in this world. Now, another thing to point out is that Satan has even completely normalised the calling of our precious little children kids, which of course are baby goats. Now, I'm not saying that calling your children kids is a salvation issue, but I find the origins of things like this very interesting, especially when you do a study on it. So why did we start calling children kids? It's not short for or sounds anything like children. Why didn't we start calling them pups or kittens or better yet, lambs? Actually, I like that. I think it's lambs from now on. <laughs> now, baby goats or kids were used in sacrifices, much like what many parents are doing today, sacrificing their kids to the serpent on the pole. How deceiving and sneaky that serpent is. Now, before we move on to what the Bible says about goats, I would like to go over some history of goat symbolism, because this will explain all of this. So here is some information from goatweb.com. Yes, there is actually a website based on just goats. <laughs> so the goat has long been a visual aid in symbolic and mythological literature and stories. It has varied, it has a varied significance, gentleness in one tradition and sensuality in another. Both sexes of goat symbolize fertility, vitality and ceaseless energy. The he goat or the buck is the epitome of masculine virility and creative energy, while the female doe typifies the feminine and generative power and abundance. The Sumerian god Marduk often has a goat as an accompaniment, accompaniment and it also appears with hunting goddesses like Woden, which is where we get the the um, day of the week, Wednesday, that's what it's named after. The wild goat was sacred to Artemis, who was also a hunting goddess and is an attribute of Dionysus. The goat was sacrificed to Faunus, who guarded the woods, fields and shepherds of the flock. Also to the other nature gods, such as Sylvanus and Pan, the she-goat was sacrificed to Artemis at her Athenian festival of Munica. Herod Herodotus says that the goat skin or Aegeus was worn by the statue of Athene in the Librian sacrifices and rites. Goats were sacrificed at the Roman uh, Lupercalia. The Lupercal was naked, but for the goat skin, and he carried goat skin tongues for the ritual fertility whipping of women in the crowds who put themselves in the way to receive fertility magic. Now, the Semitic horned goat god Azazel symbolized life and creative energy. Now, I'd like you to have a look at the picture of Azazel on the bottom. So Azazel was a horned goat God, just like Satan, and the chimeric hermaphrodite Baphomet. Now, if you've ever had someone try to convince you that Christians serve the same God as, the, as Islam, just like the Pope has said with his whole new Chrislam religion, then let me tell you what the Muslim texts say about Azazel. In Islam, Azazel appears in relation to the story of Harat and Marat. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing those right. It could be Harut and Marut. They were a pair of angels mentioned in the Quran. Although these are not explained by the Quran itself, Muslims usually link the reason of their abode to a narr narration related to the watchers, which you'll know from 3 Enoch. So just in 3, um, the same as in 3 Enoch, angels complained about humans' iniquity 
uh, whereupon God offered a test that the angels might choose three of them among to descend to the earth, endowed with bodily desires and prove that they would do better than humans under the same conditions. Now, accordingly, they chose Azza, Isaiah and Azazel. However, Azazel repented of his decision and God allowed him to return back to heaven. The other two angels failed the test and their names were changed to Harut and Marut, or Harut and Marut. <laughs> um, they ended up on earth introducing men to elicit magic. So this magic we were talking about above, this fertility magic. But you know what? The book of Enoch doesn't describe it like that at all. In fact, Enoch 10.8 says that the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel, to him ascribe all sin. So this is why it's so, so important for God's people to seek the Holy Spirit for all truth and study the word. There is so much perversion out there. So going back to Azazel, most ancient texts, Azazel is identified as Satan. But like I said before, in Islam, they believe that um, Azazel is in heaven with God. So, you know, this is just something to really think about here. Now, like what we read above, so going back to the goat, like what we read above, the goat is a symbol dating back to the ancient times and is associated with false gods, fertility whipping rituals and sacrifices. Now, in the Bible, the Hebrew word Azazel is H. 5799, which translated into English is scapegoat. So you can study this in Leviticus 16 um, if you'd like to know more about that. Um, but let's again, in the book of Enoch and the other apocryphal texts, Azazel was one of the watchers, a fallen angel who corrupted man and opposed God. So like I mentioned, in other ancient texts, Azazel is identified as Satan. So if this is the case, the scapegoat released on the Day of Atonement who bears the sins of the congregation was being sent to Azazel. Now, this is a whole different teaching, but I wanted you to see how the goat ties in symbolically into other religions and into mythology and how the goats were symbols um, and they were sacrifices to all of these false gods and false deities. So now that we understand that, let's move on to what the Bible says about goats. Let's read Matthew 25, 32 to 33. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from his goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. So here the sheep are on the right hand, which is a place of honour, and the goats are on the left. So what does this really mean? So like I showed you before, a goat is a symbol of idolatry and pride, whereas the sheep is a symbol of meekness and humbleness. The goats simply think they are the greatest of all time and they're not afraid to show it. So what does the Bible say will happen to the, to the proud? So the goats. So James 4.6 and 1 Peter 5.5 5 both tell us that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Now, what else does the Bible say about these prideful goats? Well, let's read Zechariah 10.3. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. So remembering that the goat is a symbol from prideful people, let's read what Malachi 4.1 says. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, ye all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So now this leads us perfectly into Matthew 25. Um, sorry, into the rest of Matthew 25. But before we read the rest of Matthew 25, I just want to go back and reread what we read at the top about the sheep and the goats. 
So uh, verses 32 and 33 says, And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a sheep divideth his sorry, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from his goats, and he shall set his sheep on his right hand, but his goats on his left hand. So now we'll read uh, Matthew 25 and we'll read verses 34 through to 46. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you look up, looked after me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And they too will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then the king will answer, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So the sheep on the right hand inherit the kingdom of God. And the goats on the left hand are cursed and go into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So now let me ask you what I asked you at the very, very beginning of this video. Are you a sheep? The Lord really, really impressed on me to bring this teaching forward today. I actually sat down at my computer to do uh, to look over some things that Andrea sent me and then I was just given all of this. So, you know, I felt really convicted about these things for a while. But, you know, today I know that he wanted me to make these things be aware to the body. You know, some of these things um, that we send on and that we forward on to other people, we don't really think before we do them and they may seem innocent, but just always remember that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. He flips absolutely everything upside down and makes things that are good seem evil and things that are evil seem good. You know, looking around at the world, we see it everywhere. You know, this time of year, we're watching people embrace Halloween. You know, they're dressing their children up as demons and devils and witches, all in the name of fun and fantasy. Well, you know, for us that truly believe in the word of God, then we know that there is nothing fantasy about any of those things. But again, this is how Satan perverts and flips things upside down. So the same as using the word sheep in a derogatory way, and using the word goat in a glorified way. So brothers and sisters, let's be as gentle as doves and as wise as serpents. You know, wisdom is a gift from the Holy Spirit and it is one that you should be praying for regularly along with discernment. So let's all be those wise virgins with enough oil in our lamps to keep going. Because although all those virgins all 10 of them fell asleep. Five of them had enough oil in their vessels to keep going when the bridegroom came. You know, the spiritual warfare is very, very real. And the wearing out of the saints is well and truly upon us. Satan will do anything to lead the sheep astray. We have God's word. We need to stay in the word and we need to stay in prayer. 
while we wait for the return of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. So on that note, even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Many blessings.